Adam, it's finally here. Dude, I can't believe we're seeing it in the flesh. This is a Glowforge laser cutter. Yes. Uh, we've been talking about this for a long time. We visited them. More than a year we covered it. More than it. a year. We were yeah. like one of the first people to cover it. And this is a pre-release unit that they sent us because um, they're in manufacturing now. It is beautiful. Um, full disclosure, I am a consultant for Glowforge. Mm. Uh, uh, that started a couple months ago, moving forward. Uh, but I have yet to see one of these in the flesh. So this is the first time I have witnessed it. And it's gorgeous. And I believe the reason you are so excited to get involved is that this the promise of desktop laser cutting is just, it's so impressive. The idea that you can have a laser cutter that reduces the CAD to CAM pipeline. That's the specific thing that I'm interested in. I have a laser cutter. Uh, it has an interface which is pretty good and still it drives me nuts. The whole thing of drawing something and making it a DXF, exporting it to the cutter through a printer software or whatever that CAD CAM pipeline is, is always fraught. Uh, and Glowforge is promising this kind of new reality of a machine that's intelligent, it reads the material, it understands what's going on, and also uh, you don't necessarily have to send a DXF or a, a, a CAD file to this, right? Right, right. You don't have to send a, a vector file. I mean, that's it's, huge. It, it's huge, and it may not be for everyone. Professionals are, of course, going to be able to use industrial laser cutters. But just opening the possibility of laser cutting, letting young makers think about materials and building yeah. in this way with a tool like this is something that growing up we never had access no, to. No, not even close. Uh, this is a 40 watt laser. I think the first uh, laser cutter I used at ILM was like pretty underpowered for what it was doing and it was very, very slow. So Glowforge, I mean, this is a fairly powerful machine for something you can literally put on your desktop. Right, and talking to Dan, the CEO of Glow Glowforge last year, we learned that, you know, this is a CO2 laser. It's not your metal RF laser. Uh, but the amazing thing that they've done is put cameras, computer vision, into their product. Oh, right, right, right. So there are two cameras in this machine, one in the center right here, and one on the lens, the, the head, as you will. What do they, move. what is the, how do they split their duties? Well, the sensor camera is a wide angle camera that looks at the bed, this uh, 20 inch by 12 inch surface, and recognizes material, knows what you're gonna put in there, what things you might draw on there. Whoa. And then the other head uh, camera, then focuses the individual points that lets you cut on potentially curved surfaces. You could put a laptop in there and have it etch on a laptop. No way. Now, it's not exactly there yet because it is a pre-release unit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but one of the first things I wanted to get you to do is to test that camera system and its traceability. Okay. So we had you do a drawing. Yes, I, uh, I did a little drawing on one of the boards in my shop mm -hmm. uh, and I brought it over. Uh, this, is, this is the kind of mandala that I will doodle when I'm on the phone with someone. I don't always put Savage Cave. I thought if I was gonna laser cut something, it ought to be, uh, you know, have the design to it that I can put somewhere. So let's just show you guys what the process is by putting this in and running through that software real quick. Here we go. All right, how does this work? So it's all web-based. They do all their processing in the cloud and oh. you load up their web app. Uh, like you said, we could import a bitmap or a vector file, but what we're doing is tracing. And there's mm -hmm. a trace feature here. It's taking a picture. So this is that center camera. Sure. Taking a picture of that material. I'll draw a box over your drawing. And then there it is. It's processed that. it um, and it's gonna etch it. Now, because you didn't do like gradients, it's a very simple line drawing. It looks great, but then there are also settings to darken it or lighten it. Um, we can hold shortcuts if you want to add darker. Nice. Oh, that's maybe a little too much. I think it's a little too dark. Yeah, how about like right there? That seems great. Uh, one step down, that's great. And then the outline, you want to cut that, right? So I'm going to click that. Ooh, and so it's going to etch the center and cut that outline. And I guess what, we're just going to hit print and we're almost one step away. That's crazy. Uh, we're in the interface now, and you can see it recognizes the material. We have eighth inch plywood. You have an engrave pass and a cut pass, and you can zoom in if you want to move things around, but I think it looks great there. I think it was ready to go.
So while the Glowforge is doing its thing, I wanted to let you guys know what this pre-release unit can and can't do. This isn't a production model just yet. Glowforge is still working hard on the final hardware and also updating its web-based software. But as a laser cutter, this, of course, can cut and engrave a variety of materials from your plywoods, your hardwoods, your acrylics, to even etching on metals like aluminum. Uh, now, the lens uh, that works with the Glowforge lets you focus up to half an inch deep. That means you can cut and engrave materials up to half an inch into the material, but you can put materials that are thicker than that into the Glowforge up to two inches. You just have to remove the lower tray. Uh, Glowforge is also planning on selling its own materials. They call these proof grade materials, and they have uh, not only do they have the protective coverings, but they also have these QR codes on the bottom right-hand corner that let the Glowforge use its center camera to identify the material and know exactly what settings to use in its laser. You can, of course, use your own materials, buy whatever plywood or hardwood you want and put it in, and you can adjust the speed of the laser, the power of the laser, and the focus distance, the thickness of your material. You can't save your own presets for your own materials yet, but Glowforge says that's a feature coming later. In terms of design, you can, like Adam mentioned, import uh, your raster images. And this is where Glowforge, I think, really excels in narrowing that CAD to CAM pipeline. It's really simple to click upload and throw in a bitmap, a JPEG, a PNG, and have the Glowforge etch uh, your image onto wood. Uh, but you can also upload vector files. SVG files are what it accepts right now. And I had no problems putting SVG files, outlines to cut, and then throwing in rasters to etch something in the middle of a pendant or a bag or even a luggage tag. That's all working pretty great. Glowforge also has a feature called 3D Engrave, and this is taking a file that essentially works as a grayscale depth map that lets you etch and get gradients, these vertical gradients into the material. And you're basically etching really deep designs into your wood uh, or even aluminum and you can have detail up to 1300 DPI. Now you're never gonna use up to that amount of resolution um, on hardwood, but for aluminum, that lets you get really fine lines uh, and detail without seeing the horizontal etch lines. Uh, what the pre-release units can't do yet though, is give you full access to the bed. Right now, the bed is 20 inches by 12 inches, and you have access to about 18 and a half inches by 10 inches. And the Glowforge in the pre-release unit also doesn't have the 3D multi-point autofocus turned on to let you automatically recognize the height of curved objects to etch on that yet. Right now, that macro camera on the lens head focuses right in the center of your material, uh, which has worked okay, but looking forward to those updates. But in the meantime, let's go check in on that cut. It's, it's done. done. <laughs> <laughs> we did that at the same time. Uh, so it took 40 minutes? About 40 minutes to get this done, and I believe most of that was in the etching, but you wanna take a look at it? Yeah, let's do. Awesome. Um, let's take the material out, cut all the oh, way through, no okay. problem. that was great. Awesome. And there you go. That is a very deep etch, so clear. Oh, 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 look this at that. This is something funny, because you drew the outline. So bold. And we marked it as a cut, and then it marked it as a an outline for that cut, so you have a nice little frame for it. Okay, so that actually is not insignificant. That is like, <sighs> I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's like 20 thou. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. really nice, fine, fine detail work that you can do. Yeah. Um, that's great. Ooh. And if you look at your drawing here, right there, where you drew. In the center, it's perfect, it's and as perfect. it goes to the outer burrows, it, it goes a little bit off. Um, that is. Oh, I yeah. love the smell. This is the smell, like when I got to ILM, 99, 1998, that's when they f first had the laser cutter just about a year before. So I saw that, I smelled it, I saw what it could do, and I was like, I want to learn. And this smell is just, it's intoxicating. It's a terrible smell. It's really bad for you, but man, it's Nostalgic. And you love the smells. You know what my favorite part of using something like this is? What's that? It's peeling off the protective covering. Oh, yeah. So satisfying. It is satisfying. Yeah, no, it's like um, for all those scab pickers out there, man, it's uh, it's really, oh, oh yeah. 
Yeah. Norm, would you like to? I would go for it. All right. We are now going to sign off while Norm enjoys peeling off the paper. Now, for people who've backed Glowforge, I know there are a lot of you out there. Glowforge is updating the status of their production and shipments. Uh, they said they would have an update soon on their website, so check out their website for that info. But we're going to have more fun with this pre-release unit, and I'm going to do some more laser cutting. Awesome. But thank you, Adam, for doing the first cut with me. My ple- oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. So now that we've shown you the trace feature of the Glowforge, I want to show you how it tackles vector files, SVGs. And one of the first things I want to do with the Glowforge is print out, cut out some ornaments. Now there's a makerspace up in Seattle, Washington called C4 Labs, and they released a design on Thingiverse that I'm in love with. So without revealing what it is, let's get to cutting that. So while the second cut is happening, I want to run you guys through some impressions of my use of this pre-release unit, uh, both at our office and also having it set up in my home office for the past couple of days. And it really is mind-blowing that in today's day and age, you can have a working, functional, safe-to-use laser cutter that's practical in your home office. Of course, if you follow all the instructions and get it set up properly. And setup was actually really easy. Getting it on the right place, getting the ventilation set up, and having it connect to my home Wi-Fi network. I was cutting and engraving in less than an hour. And I had lots of success with cutting and engraving from both Glowforge's own design library, as well as vectors I downloaded from Thingiverse and other SVG repositories. I had a ton of fun going through my photo library, for instance, and digging up some uh, rasterized images to see what I could engrave onto the plywood. Now, that said, there is a lot of room for improvement, and there will be a couple things I'm going to look out for in the production models. First and foremost, uh, I want to see what the accuracy of that center camera, that wide-angle camera, is going to be, which works as basically a scanner for the laser bed. This is what gives Glowforce its computer vision magic. And right now, the lens of that camera is really sharp for in the center of your images if you draw things or put things right underneath it. But as you move further away toward the edge of the material, anything drawn there or scanned there ends up being a little blurry. And Glowforge has said that that's also because there may be some warping in the material and that would be fixed once they turn on their multi-point 3D autofocus uh, with the second camera on the lens head. Um, so hopefully Hopefully that gets fixed. Um, and also, right now, it takes a long time to scan Glowforge's proof grade materials. I know it's a feature they just added, uh, so that's to be expected, and hopefully that's going to be uh, reduced over time. And right now, there's also no ability to save your own settings for your own materials, but again, that's a feature that Glowforge has promised. Uh, there are no design tools built into their web app either, and I know Glowforge isn't trying to build an Illustrator or Inkscape for the web web, but it would be really nice if we could draw a circle or draw a square around our rasters uh, within the web app as opposed to having to launch Illustrator, create a vector, and then upload that to do some basic design um, and without adding those extra steps. Uh, there are also a couple unknowns with the Glowforge. Now, Glowforge plans on shipping a HEPA charcoal filter for some of their units, and people have pre-ordered those, but that's not quite ready yet. And we yet don't know how long those filters will last. And we also don't know how long the laser will last it's obviously worked quite well for the couple days we've had it, but the laser lifespan is going to be a concern for me. Both of these, the filters and the laser, are consumables that Glowforge will also sell replacements for in the future. This came out super nice. And one of the interesting things about this design is the SVG had multiple layers. And within the Glowforge software, I was able to turn one layer into a cut line, one into engrave, and one to a score line. So you can see 
Here it's engraving, here it's scoring, not cutting all the way through, and then of course it cuts all the way through. And as you can see, it is an ornament set based on, well, maybe a popular franchise you might recognize that I won't name for legal reasons, but this looks great. And now I'm going through and doing my favorite part, which is peeling off the protective covering. And on this walnut hardwood, these ornaments look so fantastic. I could spend so much time just peeling this off, but we're not gonna waste your time because I've already done it. And here is the finished product. A little bit of holiday cheer. Can't wait to do more laser cutting. We'll see you next time.